Hey guys, what's up? Cole here from TechInform.us, and in today's video, I wanted to give an overview of uh, Apple's new Final Cut Pro X, also known as Final Cut Pro 10. So when we launch the application, uh, I have an SSD, a Final Cut Pro is installed on an SSD, it takes about three or four bounces, and opens right up. Here is today's vlog, I already started editing it just to screw around in it and see what I could accomplish. And uh, as you can see, you can scroll through it. And uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail in this video, but in this video, I just wanted to uh, show you guys some key features and basically my opinions on the software because there's a lot of controversy uh, because it does have the Final Cut Pro name, which is a very professional name. But uh, a lot of professional editors are kind of saying it's just an iMovie. So I want to give you guys my opinion of what I think this software is, what the market is, and uh, if Final Cut Pro 7 is still needed for the professional film film editor. Alright guys, so when you open up Final Cut Pro, if you're coming from iMovie, it'll look very familiar. If you're coming from Final Cut Pro 7, it will look uh, a little easier in the eyes, but it will definitely look new and completely different. None of your key commands are the same. Nothing is going to work the same way as it did in Final Cut Pro 7. That's just how it is. Apple completely rewrote the application. It now works in 64-bit. It has background rendering. It does amazing stuff. Okay, so all you people coming from Final Cut Pro 7, uh, I realize it's going to be a hard transition for you. Uh, it's not an easy transition even for people from my movie. However, you need to be open to change. Change isn't always bad, okay? Now, it might not look quite as professional on the surface, but I uh, will almost guarantee that most of the features you want to use will be in this application, and they will be easy to use. Now, uh, will they be quite as editable? Maybe not. Will they be quite as uh, usable uh, for your personal applications? Maybe not. They're more generalized tools and uh, it's more of a slightly more consumer product. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now me. Uh, I do a vlog every day and I do tech videos. I don't need the most professional film editing software. I have been using Final Cut Pro 7 for about a week now. I decided before this application came out, Final Cut Pro X, I would uh, check out Final Cut Pro 7. And uh, I learned basically how to edit video in it. Fine. I learned it. And uh, I didn't have any problems learning it. And uh, it's definitely harder than Final Cut Pro X. So coming back from Final Cut Pro 7 to Final Cut Pro X is uh, super easy for me. Uh, it's a slight transition, but uh, it hasn't been a big deal at all. Now, if you're coming from iMovie 11, it might be a huge deal for you guys to switch. Yeah, it has the look of iMovie, but it definitely doesn't have the feel of it. It has so much more horsepower behind this application than iMovie 11 does. It is absolutely incredible. You launch the application, you're going to feel that it is a pretty beefy application. Now, the specs of my MacBook Pro is a 2011 Core i5, 2.3 GHz, and uh, I have 8 gigs of RAM in this machine with an SSD, as I was saying before. This thing runs really quickly. Yeah, with Final Cut Pro X, I'm pushing the limits of this machine, and I'm just going to put that out there. I am pushing the limits of this machine. So let's say you have a 2008 MacBook uh, 2.0 GHz. You're not going to be able to run this, and I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to run this. I would say you need at least 8 gigs of RAM to run this. Uh, 2 gigs, hell no. 4 gigs, uh, it's going to be a miserable experience. 8 gigs. Uh, you're pushing it. 16 gigs. If I were to put 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM in this machine, it would run this application perfectly. No problems. With my 8 gigs, I'm pushing it. Like I said before, I'm on the edge of not being able to run this application well. And, uh... It's fine, you know, I will probably put 16 gigs in this machine at some point in time. However, you know, don't look to run this machine on a Mac Mini uh, with 2 gigs of RAM. It's not going to happen, and I'm sorry for that. You're going to stick to iMovie. Alright, so now with kind of like my overview done with, let's get into some of the uh, quick little features of this app. I'm not going to go into detail with anything or key commands or anything. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the application, and uh, in future videos, I will go over uh, the details of this uh, application. Alright, so up here on the left, we can start off with Event Library. Basically, you can just scroll through your different hard drives. Uh, no events exist on this disk. Uh, right now, I only have events on my Macintosh HD, which is the SSD. You can see all the things I have imported. Uh, here is a clip, Samsung. So, let's actually create a new project down here. As you can see, 
Let's name it uh, test for video. Test for video, custom, 720p. Uh, sure, 720p. Let's up the frame rate to 30. Okay. There, there's your new project. Great animation coming in here, makes it look very professional. Uh, to import a clip, well, not to import a clip, once your clips are imported, uh, importing your clip is fairly simple. Just click this button and it will bring up your camera. Hi and uh, close that. Uh, your also flip or whatever other camera you have plugged in will also show up in that box. Once you have a clip in this box, all you have to do is either select the whole clip by clicking it once, or select a section of the clip you want. Uh, once you have your selection of the clip you want to import, just click quickly press E on your keyboard, and it will go into your timeline. And here we have it in our timeline. Now, let's say we want this whole clip in here. Let's take this whole clip, add, and it put it in here on your timeline. Now, we can play back, and you can see that. Now, let's say I only want a small section of this clip. Uh, that's enough. Put that in there, and uh, let's actually zoom in on this. And another key command I found was Command Plus and Minus. You can zoom in, zoom out. Super, super simple. And, uh... Yeah, there you go. So, now you can see we have our three clips in here. We can play it back, all six plus seconds of it. Okay, so there we go. Now, let's try to put a quick transition in. Now to put a transition in, or any video effect for that matter, you can see over here, you have all your tabs. Over here, filters, effects basically is what they call them. Your photos, music, Transitions, text, generators, and themes. Okay, let's do a news intro. Drag the news intro over into the beginning of this clip. We're going to replace it. Uh, the first clip was actually too short, so it started with that clip. That's fine. Okay, so now we can click over here and we have the inspector tool. If you don't have the inspector, you can click this button right here. It'll show your inspector. Now, what you have to do is you can say what you want it to say. Pick your font. We'll just go there. You can just click on the video, change your text. Up here. Test. Now we have test text. Drag down here and we can play this back. Test text. And there we go. Now, we can have a quick transition from that to the video. Let's do a quick cross resolve in here. There we have a cross resolve from the beginning. Now this should play back. Very cool, very nice. Very nice looking. Okay, now we can scroll down here to the back of the clip and we can make it come in or out of a black hole not sure which there we go now we have an outro so uh, let's add text for this clip then we will be ready to do a quick export all right guys so let's add this cinema text to the clip here let's drag it in let's start it right here drag it in we can change the text on it Let's change it to Colt. Now, if you look, Colt. There we go. I don't like that outro, so let's actually get replace that outro with a different outro. Let's actually just get a simple bloom. Let's put that in there and see how that looks. Pretty cool. Kind of just like goes bright and then goes out to nothingness. So that's pretty sweet. And also, as you can see, this has been background rendering the entire time. Let's scroll out. You can see it's taking a long time to render because there are a lot of heavy effects in here. And like I said, my computer is not the most powerful machine to do this on. A Mac Pro would have this rendered in seconds, you know? But that's just how it is. I'm also doing this screen recording so my computer doesn't have as much power as it normally would. Alright, so now this is finished rendering itself. I just sat here for about two minutes and let it finish rendering. Uh, this is completely ready to export. So, 
what we need to do here is go up to share export movie choose h.264 don't use current settings h.264 i find is the best it says it is going to be about 15 megabytes uh click next test for video save yeah replace it's now going to export the video and normally it would export the video much quicker than this but it's taking longer you know six seconds to export a six second video uh it would normally be a lot quicker than that, but it's taking longer because I am recording 1080p screencast. So, now that we have this ready, you can see that this works fully. It is very beautiful, very professional looking, and there we go, we're out. Now I could make that outro longer. Alright, so I didn't like that outro, that outro was a little short. Uh, what we're going to want to do now is, let's delete the outro. Alright, so now that the outro is deleted, let's actually delete this Samsung clip. Bring in a longer Samsung clip. From, actually, let's just select the whole thing. E to add to your timeline. There you go. It is magnetic, so as you can see, you can't drag something out here like you could in Final Cut Pro 7 and just let it sit out there. We gotta have this here. Title text goes away. Let's start the... Let's actually start a lens flare outro. Let's put the outro here. Make the outro slightly longer. Let's start the outro as soon as the text goes away. There we go. I'm gonna let this render quickly and then we'll export. All right, so that took literally 10 seconds to render. And uh, now let's share export movie. Next, save, replace exporting we're done let's view it okay so i like that a lot more so that was our first video we created uh well with you guys on camera and uh that is how you create a quick video in final cut pro x now i will have much deeper and more you know in-depth tutorials in the future this is just a quick overview uh use suggestions down below what do you want to learn how to do i can figure out pretty much anything in this program i can figure out how to do it i'm still learning it i've had this program for about uh, 14 hours now uh, 12 of those or 10 of those where I was sleeping <laughs> so I haven't had a whole lot of time in here but as you can see just being someone who's used iMovie 11 and Final Cut Pro 7 uh, I've already known a lot of all these features and how to use them so uh, leave your comments down below I'm curious to see what you guys think like I said this was just a quick video I didn't go very in-depth and I realized that but this video wasn't supposed to be in-depth this was just a quick how to make a quick video in Final Cut Pro X so with that said, I'm going to wrap up the video here. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash cold4595. Check out the website, techinform.us, where we have great tech-related content posted every day. I also now do daily vlogs, youtube.com forward slash cold's vlogging. And with all this said, I'll see you guys in the next video.